Hey there, this is JG. This is JG Plays Raid, and let's talk about Awakenings. Let's talk about Soulstones. I have been thinking so much about the Soulstone system. Uh, you know, if you used some of my previous videos, hopefully you're taking down Iron Twins 15 like I am. And a couple weeks in now, you're starting to rack up some other resources. You know, I've got 1,500 gold coins here. Um, I've got some some silver essence, some gold essence, and I, I've started thinking a lot about how should I spend these? What's the right thing to do? Should I be buying silver essence with those coins? Should I be buying immortal soul stones? Uh, you know, what's gonna gonna be the optimum play here? And um, so I've got a lot of material lined up here because I've been putting a lot of thought into this. Right now, I've got a two-part series for you about um, soul stone economy strategy. So basically, what what should you be buying with your your coins and your and your essence? Uh, and so, part one tonight, what we're going to talk about is what kinds of resources should you buy. You know, should your coins go into soul stones or into essence? And with that essence, when you're in the soul merchant, what kinds of souls should you be looking for? You know, legendary or epic? Uh, do you want to focus on one champ or three champs or things like that? Um, so, part one, that's what we're going to focus on. Part two. Um, you know, once you've decided what kinds of resources you're looking for, we're going to talk about um, which specific champions and which specific blessings you should focus on uh, to impact your account the most. So um, I'm excited about it. Let's dive in. So the first thing that I recognized in digging into this, um, six star legendaries are where it's at. Um, getting legendaries to six star Awoken is going to be huge. There's that big speed boost, which is great in all kinds of content, and um, there's some really powerful awakenings at six stars. So um, the legendary blessings are substantially better than epic ones. There are a few epic ones that are quite nice, um, but by and large, the, the legendary ones are great. Um, just about all of them have um, some viability in some spots of the game. And there are several um, blessings that are really good that get substantially better at six stars. So Intimidating Presence, I would say below five stars isn't really worth it, but at five and six stars, it is a, a very powerful one. Um, Temporal Chains gets um, some really powerful abilities at six stars. Crushing Rend, um, the epic one, gets really good at six stars. So I think the first note of strategy is you should be focused on how do I get six star legendaries with, with good blessings on them. Uh, and so that's what we're going to dive in and start to focus on. So um, here are the, the essence costs to get souls in the soul merchant. So um, obviously, you know, getting a, a six star legendary soul um, from a soul stone would be nice, but you can't choose what champion it is. It might be a champion that you don't have. And um, so soul merchant is your one place where you can choose exactly who it is that you're going to level. So I think that um, using the Soul Merchant well is going to be really key to mastering your, your strategy for Soul Stones and Awakenings. So you see the first four stars of souls from the Soul Merchant cost Silver Essence. Uh, it takes 480 Silver Essence uh, to get a Legendary up to four stars, and it's one-third of that for an Epic. And then the last two stars, five star and six star, they take the Gold Essence, um, it takes 400 total gold essence to get a legendary up to that sixth star. So, how long is it going to take us to get that? Well, um, the main place you can get all of this is Iron Twins, and we're going to only really talk about Iron Twins tonight. Um, obviously, you may have been picking up some uh, some resources of various sorts, you know, some mortal soul stones or silver coins or occasionally gold coins um, from tur uh, tournaments and events. That's going to speed up this whole process for you. Um, but all this analysis just assumes that Iron Twins is the only way you're getting it. So, um, a typical Iron Twins run, uh, you've got an 88% chance of getting silver coins uh, with an average of 165 dropping. Uh, you have an 8% chance of getting silver essence with an average of 5 dropping. And a 4% chance of getting 3 to 5 uh, gold essence. Um, I will note, uh, these are the numbers I found from the internet. I don't have any independent corroboration of that. Um, the numbers that I have in my account right now seem to line up with those numbers, so I, I think it's accurate. Um, but I think until we've run hundreds of runs, we won't have a definitive answer. Um, so what this means is if you want to get a six-star legendary, all you have to do is 2,500 Iron Twins runs. 
Um, so across those runs, uh, you'll get an average of 363,000 silver soul coins, um, which will equate to 363 mortal soul stones. You'll get 1,000 silver essence on average, and 400 gold essence, that, that number that you need. Also, incidentally, this will take you about nine and a half months. So this is not, not a, a short-term play. This is something that's going to take you a while. And so that, that nine and a half months figure, I'm, I'm using the value of 60 Iron Twins runs per week. So if you're using your keys every day, then you're fighting the Iron Twins uh, 42 times in seven days. Um, however, you get twice the drops on Sundays when it's the Void Affinity. So you're effectively getting 48 runs worth of rewards uh, in those seven days. And because of those double rewards on Sunday, I think it's a great day to spend the 150 gems to get six more keys and do another six runs, um, which is 12 runs worth of rewards. And so that's where I get to the number uh, 60 runs per week. So if that's the strategy you're using, it should take about nine and a half months to get to this value. So that is not a short amount of time. You know, these six star legendaries that you get to pick, uh, you know, you're going to be getting one a year. Um, more or less. One other question you might have is, well, that's the time you need to get the gold essence, but then you also have to see this champion in the soul merchant to be able to buy them. And they have to show up six separate times unless you, you happen to get lucky and pick up a perfect soul along the way for them. That's less of a concern than the resources. So if you're playing regularly, you are um, seeing the soul merchant refresh twice a day. So you're seeing eight different legendaries and 12 different epics every day. Um, with the current size of the champion pool, um, you should see uh, for legendary champions, on average, every champion once a month or so. And so, um, although once you finally get to that uh, last you know, 400 gold essence you need for the sixth star, uh, at 9.5 months, you're going to be waiting you know, another month or maybe longer if you're unlucky until um, you actually see it uh, and are able to buy that sixth star. So it's going to add a little bit of time there. Um, but in general you will see the champion more frequently than you're actually able to buy the souls because you're not going to have enough essence ready. So, if you're focusing on that six-star legendary, after 2,500 Iron Twins runs, you're going to have one six-star Awoken legendary of your choice. Plus, left over, you're going to have 363 mortal soul stones and 520 silver essence left. Um, so that's enough to take another legendary to four stars. So recall it takes 480 silver essence to get a legendary to four stars, plus a little bit left over. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you should use the rest of those resources. So assuming you've decided to prioritize one six-star legendary over nine months as the main thing you're chasing, what should you do with everything else? Um, so let's talk about those 363 mortal soul stones first. So... Um, out of those soul stones, on average, you should get something like 22 legendary souls. Um, mostly those are going to be one to two star, because mostly what you get are one to two star souls out of this. Um, you should get two five to six star epic souls, uh, 16 three to four star epic souls, um, but generally lots and lots and lots of crap. If you've been opening up your mortal soul stones, presumably you've noticed this already. You get a lot of souls that are not good, <laughs> that are not usable by you, or that are for champions that you just don't care about. And you spend a lot of time selling them. The big question that you have, you know, after opening 363 mortal soul stones, are any of them going to be good? Um, what are the chances that I'm getting something that I'm actually excited about? And so when I say good here, um, I've been thinking about um, you know, a good pull from a mortal soul stone um, as uh, something that meets four criteria. And it's a low chance because all four of these things need to be true for you to really be happy with the soul that you get. Number one, it needs to be high rarity. Um, you know, although you might be kind of excited about your five-star cold heart, um, really, if it's not epic or legendary, it's not that impressive of a soul. Number two, it needs to be high rank. Uh, so what I consider good is three stars or better. That's really where most of the blessings, you know, they hit their, their second feature, and uh, they've got a stat bonus in them. You know, that's a, a pretty solid level. Uh, and one that's fairly hard to come by, and, and therefore you know, one that's pretty valuable. Um, number three, it needs to be a champion that's good. Uh, you know, just getting any epic champion doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, there are a lot of epics that, you know, maybe you'd be excited about them if you're your first week in the game and they're the first epic you get. But as you have a more mature account, uh, there are a lot of epics that you really don't care about that you would throw straight in the trash if you pulled them from a, from a shard. Um, and their souls aren't going to mean much to you either. And fourth, not only does it have to be a champion that's good, it has to be a champion you have. 
because you know if you if you get a six star soul for Dracomorph and you don't have Dracomorph, um, you know that's not going to do anything for you. Uh, you're just going to maybe keep it and hope for a long time. Maybe pull uh, shards in Dracomorph 10x events, um, but it's not going to do much for you. So the first two here, these are well known. They've published the pull rates on souls, and so you can compute exactly what is my chance of getting an epic or a three star uh, or better soul. Um, the thing that's a little harder to compute is um, what are your chances of getting a champion that's good um, or a champion that you own? So that's something that I spend a little time thinking about. Um, so first of all, how many champions total are good? And the way I approximated this, um, I looked on a Yumi Loves website and just um, figured across the various rarities how many total epics, how many total legendaries fell into the A tier or the S tier of the tier list on there. And obviously people can have different tier lists and value different things, but I thought that was just a good approximation of getting a sense for you know, what fraction of epics are good epics, what fraction of legendaries are good legendaries. And these numbers seem to make sense, you know. Uh, one quarter of epics are, are good epics, and the rest are kind of lackluster. Uh, and about half the legendaries are, are really, you know, good high-end legendaries. Uh, and the others, uh, you know, they're still legendary, but they're, they're maybe less impressive. But that said, just because you get a good champion soul doesn't mean it's one that you can use. Uh, the first question is, how many of these champions do you own? You know, uh, at, at best, um, you, you own every champion. And so that percentage from the last slide, you know, 26% and 54% uh, is your chance of owning the champion. However, if you do own every champion, it's probably not the case that 100% of those champions are actually relevant to you. you know, the more champions you get, the more picky you can be in building your teams, and so the higher your standards are for champions that you're interested in developing and cha champions you're interested in using. And so... Um, when I decided, uh, I tried to sort of estimate uh, how many champions do you use in your account? And um, I came up with an estimate of about 20 epics and 20 legendaries, where, uh, you know, even as you get into a really well-developed account, you might have a lot more level 60 champions than that, but how many are actually in teams that you use regularly and, and ones that you pay a lot of attention to? Um, I don't think you can really be highly invested at any given point in time in more than about 40 champions. Um, so this number might change uh, for you based on how advanced your account is. You know, honestly, I don't think I have 20 legendaries. For, for me, there's more epics and fewer legendaries in this. But um, what that comes down to is roughly 10% per month. So about 9% about of all epics are potentially interesting to you. About 11% of all legendaries are potentially interesting to you in terms of getting a soul from these and being interested in that soul. Um, and some of the other ones you might have, you might not be sad to get a soul uh, for one of those other ones. You know, you, you might not use them a lot, but hey, you know, take them to, to three star awoken, it'll be a stat boost, and maybe you'll use them more. Um, but the figure I'm really interested in is, is figuring out, um, yeah, what are your chances of getting souls that really progress your account? And um, I think for the most part, you need to get a soul for a champion you already use. Um, I'm planning to do a video later to actually ask the question. If you land a six-star soul for a champion that you don't use, or a champion that's not great, what does that do for them? You know, can can a bad champion turn into a good champion by nature of having a six-star awakening on them? Um, I'm going to give that some due diligence, uh, but from the thinking that I've done so far, uh, I think the answer is largely no. Uh, I think they can they can step up a notch, but I don't think that it's going to transform bad champions into good champions. And so, in terms of evaluating are you going to be happy with your soul stone pulls uh, i think it really needs to use a value about about at this 10 percent level um you know 10 percent of epics and legendaries uh, are interesting to you at any given point in time um so given that you can compute this like chances of getting a good pull out of any given soul stone and so i have two columns in this table the first one is that max value of let's assume all the epics that are good you own and are interesting to you, all the legendaries that are good you own and they're interesting to you. And so that's sort of the upper bound on um, you know, how happy you could be from a soulstone pool. Um, the second column, though, is what I think is the more realistic value um, based on 
you know, likely number of champions that are, that are interesting to you at any given point in time. So there's something kind of interesting here and that surprised me a little bit, but makes sense once you dig into it. So in my previous video, I was evaluating, you know, what's the relative value of these soul stones? And I, I said that immortal soul stones are worth roughly 10 mortal soul stones, because um, if you pull 10 mortal soul stones, your chances of getting, you know, a, a three star epic soul or a, a five star legendary soul are about on par with what they'd be from opening one Immortal Soul Stone. And in this table, that just about lines up. Um, so you see, you know, the, the max chance for epics, 1.3% um, here, 11% here. That's about, you know, 9x, you know, close to 10x. Um, similarly, you know, the, the estimated values, um, pretty close to 10x. Uh, for legendaries, again, 0.12 versus 1.2. Um, so you know, that idea that immortal soul stones are roughly 10x as valuable as mortal soul stones is definitely borne out here. You know, your, your chances of getting something that you're happy with by this definition of happy that I'm using, um, yeah, immortal soul stones are 10x as good. In that previous analysis, though, I said that for eternal soul stones, they're worth about 150 mortal soul stones. And that's how many mortal soul stones you need to pull to have an equivalent chance of getting um, like a five-star... Uh, legendary or epic on par with what you get from an eternal soul stone. But you see in this table, the eternal soul stone is not 150 times as good as the mortal soul stone. Uh, it's maybe 20x as good. Um, so it's worth about two immortal soul stones and not 15 uh, from the previous measure. So I thought a little about why this is and, and what it means. So um, the main reason in this particular table you see that is because I set this definition of good as being a three-star plus soul. Eternal soul stones can't drop a three-star or a four-star soul. They only drop five and six-star souls. If I change my definition of being five-star plus, um, you know, the odds on these would plummet, and you'd have about a 150x ratio between these values up here in mortal soul stones and the values down here. But I don't think that's the correct definition to use. When I think about what kind of soul would really uh, improve my account, a three-star soul is pretty solid. You know, it, it costs enough essence that replicating that just from the soul merchant takes a pretty good amount of resources. It's not something you're going to do on a whim. And that's the point where, uh, yeah, you've got your first stat bonus and you've got uh, sort of the second tier of the um, the effect from the blessing. That's um, that's a pretty good soul. Like, you know, if you get three stars on a champion that you use heavily. It's a good day for you. And so, uh, you know, when you look at the Eternal Soulstone rates, um, the thing that's interesting is uh, they improve your chances of getting a very high rank and high rarity soul, but they don't improve your chances of getting the right champion. Uh, and so, ultimately, you know, I think you're happier if you get a three star soul for a champion you use a lot than if you get a six star soul for a champion you don't have. You know, that's why the Eternal Soul Stones, I think, are not as valuable as they might first appear, because um, although they will definitely give you high rarity souls, um, a lot of them are going to be for epics that aren't good or um, epics and legendaries that you don't have. So that, that factor of like you know, only 10% of the champions are... Um, are ones that you're happy with is sort of what you see here. You know, add these together, you've got about... Uh, you know, a 9 or 10% chance from an Eternal Soul Stone of getting a good soul. Um, because that's, uh, you only have about a 9 or 10% chance of getting a champion from the Epic and Legendary pool that is relevant to you. I think that puts an interesting perspective on the value of Eternal Soul Stones. That, I mean, all of us would be happy if one just landed in our lap, you know, I, in our inbox as a gift from Plarium. You know, I wouldn't be sad to have an Eternal Soul Stone. But this makes me less inclined to really chase those Eternal Soul Stones because uh, still, you know, my, my expectation is most of the time I'm disappointed with it. Also, they're extremely rare. Uh, you know, it looks like you get maybe one every three months, uh, depending on how you decide to, to spend some of your soul coins. And uh, so, yeah, you get four a year and uh, chances are all four of those are going to be disappointing. Whereas your mortal soul stones, uh, you're getting a whole lot more of them. 
And they're kind of like ancient shards. You know, each individual mortal soul stone, not very exciting. But when you have hundreds of them, it adds up. And your chances of getting something that you're pretty pleased with increases a lot. So using the values in that previous table, um, all told across 363 mo mortal soul stones, uh, that comes out to about two pulls um, that are on my like happy pull list. You know, three stars or plus uh, on epics or legendaries that you care about. Uh, and of course, you know, the what's most likely is that they're at the low end of that spectrum. So like three to four star epics. But you know, if it if it happens to be a, a higher star legendary, you know, good for you, uh, you can celebrate. Um, the main result that you really get from these mortal soul stones is actually uh, 12,800 or so gold soul coins. You know, the vast majority of these are not going to be useful to you, and so you're just going to sell them. So yeah, the, um, the biggest result is going to be a big pile of gold soul coins. Um, you also might get some diamond soul coins from this. So if you get four to six star souls and you sell them, um, you'll get diamond soul coins. Uh, so the average is about 1,000. That's contingent on those four to six star souls that you get being ones that you do ultimately decide to sell. Um, obviously, there might be reasons, you, you know, even if you can't make use of them today, you're kind of tempted to hang on to five or six star souls. So what we're going to focus on next is with all these soul coins that you got out of the soul stones, what do you do next? Um, do you buy essence or do you buy shards? Uh, and you, there's basically four options here. There's gold and diamond coins, and for each one you can choose, are you buying essence or are you buying soul stones? And, you know, I, I've been kind of going back and forth and listening to other content creators and really thinking through the math on all of this of what's valuable here. I have to say, I don't think there's really a, uh, a best or a worst choice here. I will say that based on my analysis of eternal soul stones um, looking better on paper than they are in reality, personally, I'm going to cross off the left side here. I think that buying the eternal soul stones is probably going to be a disappointment and not a good use of those diamond coins. Um, however, if you look at um, the right-hand side here, getting that gold essence, in the top case, you, you get a total of 35 additional gold essence. That's plus 9% over this nine-month period that you've been saving up essence. So um, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, you know, surprisingly enough, it seems like the, the diamond soul coins, just because of their level of rarity, um, are actually not that, uh, not that exciting. And so whether you choose to buy soul stones or essence doesn't change the game much for you. So plus 9% means maybe this nine and a half month process turns into an eight and three quarters month process. You know, with, with as long as you're waiting to get that six star champion, I don't know that three weeks really makes a huge difference to you. So that makes me inclined to say there's, there's not really a worse choice on that front. The, the diamond soul coins, spend them how you want. If, if you're going to be happier with eternal soul stones, go for it. One of the things I, I try to remind myself, although I love to use spreadsheets in games and try to figure out the optimal decision, ultimately a game is about having fun. And if following the mathematically optimal solution is not going to be fun for you, then the game's failing to meet its purpose. So if you'd have more fun gambling on those Eternal Soul Stones and seeing what you can get, it's not that much wor worse of a choice. You're going to get a little bit less Gold Essence. Uh, you know, with that 35 Gold Essence, you could maybe take one Epic from 4-star to 5-star. And that's sort of the, the difference over a 9-month period. Now the Silver Essence, you have, um, you have somewhat more of the gold soul coins, and so there are some interesting decisions to make there. So your top option here is um, you can buy immortal soul stones. So on average, you get about 12.8 of those, um, or you can convert it all to essence. Uh, so if you get 256 essence, that's plus about 25% to the total amount of essence uh, that you got there. Uh, again, that's uh, you know 256 is about enough to take an epic from one star to four stars and have a little bit of change left over. Um, or going the soul stone path, you know, with immortal soul stones being worth about 10 mortal soul stones, this is kind of like having another 128 mortal soul stones. And so in terms of the total value you get, um, you know, it's about a 62% chance of another good pull. Uh, so from, you know, about two to about 2.6 uh, in terms of the number of you know, good results that you have, um, or you can look at that as about a plus 
in terms of the, the total number of soul stones um, that you have available and sort of the effective value that you're getting out of those. So I think either one of those is a pretty reasonable choice. And uh, I think it's really up to you whether you'd rather be pulling those stones or accumulating silver essence faster. So here's what I came down to for the strategy that I'm going to try to employ for the first few months of accumulating these resources. Um, so first of all, pick one legendary and focus on getting them to six stars. So uh, out of my whole collection, I need to, to figure out you know, who it is that, that matters the most and um, really focus on spending my essence in the Soul Merchant to get them to six stars. Uh, with the remaining silver essence, I've got enough essence to um, take one legendary to four stars. So I need to pick one legendary for that level. Um, I plan on leaning towards the buying essence with my coins path, and so I, um, I'll also pick one epic that I can awaken up to four stars. And then also I've noticed that for legendary champions, there are a number of blessings that are pretty good at just one star. So I'm also going to pick five-ish legendaries that it would be valuable to me to have them at one star. I actually already have a couple of these. I have my Helicat um, with one star Brimstone in my Iron Twins team, which makes a big difference in my Iron Twins times. And so, um, you know, the, uh, the first star costs you 20 Essence, whereas the four stars cost you 480. So this is 5% uh, of the total cost of getting to four stars. And for some of these, Blessings, you get, I think, well more than 5% of the value from just that first star. And so I think that's a, a really valuable way to spend some of your early essence, is grab that first star and um, get that initial awakening that can help advance your game a little bit. Um, with diamond coins, I'm planning to, to just buy gold essence. Like I said, I, I don't think eternal soul stones are worth it, and I'm going to be skipping those. Um, and then eventually I plan to start buying immortal soul stones, but I'm going to be buying the Silver Essence first and sort of wait until I have a nice amount of Silver Essence in the bank. So if I um, start accumulating enough that I'm able to buy the next step on each of these champions that I'm focusing on, then I'll be willing to buy Immortal Soul Stones instead. So that's a strategy that I'm going to stick to and that I feel pretty good about based on my analysis. In addition to that buy strategy, I need a sell strategy. Um, I do not expect to ever expand my... Um, soul collection size. I think 50 is plenty there. I think if you're overflowing that, um, you're just doing a bad job of really understanding the value of what you have and what's worth keeping and what's worth throwing away. I mean, sort of like doing a, a gear cleanse. You know, I, I know there's that instinct to look at something and say, like, it might be good someday for someone. Uh, no, there's a lot of stuff that, that's junk, and really you're losing out on resources if you're not selling the junk and getting uh, the currency back for it. So my sell strategy, first of all, never save a one to two star soul for a champion I don't have. Even if it's a really good champion, one and two stars are very easy to get from the soul merchant. Uh, they don't take a ton of resources compared to those higher levels. It's not worth hanging on to those and keeping them in your vault. Um, number two, if I own a champion, but I haven't six starred them, in most cases, I'm going to decide to sell that soul. Um, so that's basically my, my signal for... This champion, you know, has potential, but they're not great. And if they're not great, then probably the coins being invested into champions that are great is going to do more for my account than, uh, than awakening them. The exception, I think, would be champions that, uh, you know, are really nice champions, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet because they're new acquisitions or I was focusing on another aspect of the game. You know, and depending on how good the soul is, you know, if it's five or six stars... This could definitely turn sort of a you know an A rank cha champion into an S rank champion. You know, uh, kick someone into the the level where I'm really interested in investing in them. Um, but generally, if I haven't invested in the champion, I shouldn't invest further in the champion with these souls. I should get those soul coins instead. Um, now uh, there are a couple of cases where I will try to save souls for champions that I don't own, and it's basically if they're particularly meta relevant. Um, I've already picked up some legendary souls for um, for champions that are good, but you know, not not really at the at the high end. Not not the sort of uh, champion where I'd like crap my pants if I if I pulled them in a shard because I was so excited. Um, so 
you know, the ones that are that are especially uh, meta relevant, I'm willing to hang on to those in my vault. You know, those are the champions I'm likely to be chasing in something like a 10x event or a guaranteed pull event if I have the opportunity to, um, or just something that you know I, I'm willing to use up a little bit of my vault space to, uh, you know, to hope and pray that one day I'll be able to use it. And likewise, um, for five to six star souls, those are very hard to replace. Uh, you know, if you're getting those from the soul merchant, they use that extremely scarce resource of the gold essence. And so um, I'll definitely be a lot more flexible on hanging onto those versus like three or four star souls. So um, that's kind of what I'm planning for how I manage my vault and what I decide to sell. Um, to sort of show that I'm practicing what I preach, let's look at what I have right now. Um, I kept all of one soul of what I have so far, and uh, it's a Tatura. Uh, you know, Tatura is one that, uh, you know, three stars, uh, so enough. that's a pretty nice awakening, and Tatura is you know, something I, I definitely would find myself using in this account. Um, you know, if by any chance I got low on space, uh, I would sell that one. But uh, yeah, when I wrote this up and sort of wrote down my strategy, I actually, you know, I had about, you know, one and a half rows of souls in here and, and then looked at it and said, you know, I'm, I'm keeping things that I shouldn't be. I had like a, a one star for allure and I'd love to have an allure one star on an epic. That's not worth using the space for. I had like a two star on an Inquisitor Shamail. Similarly, you know, uh, if I had Shamail, I'd happily use that soul, but um. You know, it's it's not worth keeping around in, in the bank forever and just hoping that I pull them someday. So that's it for today. Um, next time, what we're going to talk about is, okay, if you're following a similar strategy to me, um, then you're picking one legendary to take to six star, one to take to four star, and an epic to take to four stars. What should you choose? What blessings and what champions are going to be good at those particular levels? Uh, I think the four-star question is particularly interesting. That um, I've done a little analysis on what are good blessings at one star and what are good uh, blessings at six stars, and I think a lot of people have talked about that. Um, but because breaking above four stars takes a different resource, I think four stars is going to be a stopping point that a lot of people find in their accounts. And so I think considering what champions and what blessings are good at four stars is going to be an interesting piece of strategy for you to have available as you consider your meta strategy for the game. So that's it for today. Um, the next episode will be out soon. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you liked it, please drop a like. Uh, I'd be happy for you to subscribe as well. And you'll find out when I publish the next episode of this probably in a few more days. Thanks for watching. JG out.